Hi, my name is Vishnu Bairoju. I graduated from a Caribbean medical school and in a few weeks I will be starting my full-time internship in one of the government hospitals in my hometown which is Hyderabad. And before I move on to this really busy phase, I wanted to document how I prepared for the USMLE Step 1. I took this exam last year and when I was preparing for it, a lot of advice came from YouTube, both actively and passively. And I just wanted to replicate the same. If you're someone that's preparing for this exam, I hope certain things that I, that I talk about in this video can be helpful to you. So here's my USMLE step one preparation. And yeah, starting with my score report, September 9, 2020, which was last year. That's when I took this exam, right around this time. And as you can see, I scored a 257. Here are the resources that I used, UWorld, First Aid and all of those things. And I think more or less everyone uses the same resources. It depends on how you use it and how you improve your strengths and improve your weaknesses. That is all it is about. I did about 80, I mean 40 to 80 questions a day of UWorld and I spent the rest of the day reviewing those 80 questions using these supplemental resources. I used pretty much all of these resources but not in their entirety. Let me explain. For example, if I was doing first aid, I was advised to do first aid cover to cover and probably three or four reads but that did not work out for me. The first time I tried reading first aid cover to cover, I panicked because that would take days together and it never really gave me the feeling that I know anything. It just felt like a bunch of facts which is exactly what it is and there was no real understanding. A few a few days later I realized that that's not what I want to do so I decided to just stop reading first aid but by the end of the exam preparation I think I was good with about 80 to 90 percent of all of the first aid so it's just a different way of approaching things but Thoma Dr. Hussein Sattar is amazing at simplifying things and if you want to learn one thing from Pathoma I would say that is what it is he just teaches you how to look at things in a very simplified way and you should you should learn that for your exam because you have a great deal of content on this test and you should be able to simplify it so that you can remember that forever. Talking about memory, Sketchy Medicine was my best friend. Sketchy Micro and Sketchy Farm made sure that I would do really well on my respective uh, subject areas because I wasn't able to memorize anything before that, honestly. I would try memorizing the names of the bugs and the drugs and it did not really work out for me. I was I was slacking off and I was just getting really frustrated but these cartoons which have a bunch of themes really really helped. Divine is a podcaster and he has I think now over 300 podcasts if I'm not mistaken. And he really does do a very good job in giving you an alternative perspective of things. I think that is very important for this exam. The idea that you, you should see things from a different perspective. And if you have the time, I'd highly recommend him. But if you do not have the time, you can, you can do fine even without listening to him. But I would recommend him. What's in Beyond is by Dr. Ryan who is a cardiologist and his videos are exceptionally good but then again if you do not have the time to spend for the whole videos you don't have to you don't have to spend the entire time watching all of the videos and you can pick whichever ones you feel like you might need and Anki is that space repetition software which is gaining a lot of craze but it wasn't for me when I started out, it felt like the best thing ever and it felt like my memory was improving. But later on, I realized that that is a very strong commitment that I have to wake up every day and then do these flashcards and it just wasn't working out. So midway, I stopped Anki. I did, I did Anki for about three weeks or four weeks, I guess, at the max, probably an hour every day. But then I realized I cannot keep up and I decided to stop. If you're someone that has a lot of dedication and consistency, Anki can work like a charm. It can easily, easily give you really good scores. So in all, the most important would be UWorld, which would be 10 on 10, 
first date and my opinion was 6 and 10 for me Pathoma was 9 and 10 Sketchy Medicine was definitely a 10 on 10 Divine Interventions probably 6 and 10 but don't get me wrong he's still amazing Boats and Beyond 6 and 10 and Anki about 5 and 10 Moving on yeah as I said there, there are a lot of other amazing resources that you do not that you do that you do not need to use if you don't feel comfortable that comfortable with them but if you find kaplan or anything ambos or anything is working for you you should do that there is no hard and fast rule to scoring fine on this exam you just do what works for you and you just put aside what does not work for you it's simple and periodically you should be taking your self assessments just to check how you're progressing and just to find out your strengths and weaknesses and NBMEs and UL and Free 120 can do a really great job in telling you that. I did them uh, once every week or maybe when I'm getting closer to the exam a little more frequently and here are my scores. I started out in the 220s and by the time I reached my final, I mean by the time I reached my exam date, I went into the 250s and my NBME 18 was the closest to my exam. NBME 18 was the 257 and yeah, as you can see that. This upward trend was kind of encouraging and to keep this going, I had to figure out my weaknesses. So if I do practice blocks and I see that I'm consistently making mistakes in questions about shock, I would spend a few hours probably in the evening or maybe first thing in the day to just learn about shock. If I found that biostatistics was hard, I would spend a few hours exclusively on biostatistics until I felt satisfied that, you know what, this is good enough. And as you can see, uh, you can notice that it's pretty consistent and there's, there's an upward trend, there's been huge gaps between NBMEs and all of these can be explained by the number of practice questions that I was moving forward with. There are always going to be outliers, for example, my UWSA 10273, everyone knows it over predicts. And NBME 21 was a 243, I, I was a little upset, but now I see there was no reason to be. So keep your sanity in check, just be, just be okay with whatever scores you're getting as long as you're close to your target scores. Don't fret over a re don't fret over a score that's not what you expect, and don't be really happy about score that seems out of the blue. And yeah, just keep taking regular breaks. That's that's something really important. Just do just do things that keep you happy and uh, while you're preparing for this exam because it gets tough. The more the more the number of weeks that you're spending at your desk, you start realizing it's it's gonna be this way for a very long time and you need to keep taking regular breaks at least a weekend off or yeah whatever whatever helps you and don't expect yourself to sit and study for 12 hours a day because that's just not practical that's not how it works and yeah there is a great deal of advice on youtube and i found a lot of youtubers that uh, youtubers that would help me along this way passively and Here's a list of few. Dirty Medicine has great content. He, uh, whoever this person is, makes videos for students. He understands the perspective of a student that it's really hard memorizing a bunch of stuff, and he does re he really does the trick for your exam. That's all I can say. Doctor Randy Nail is whom I would credit for my biostatistics because essentially a lot of my biostatistics was I learned it from Dr. Randy Nail and now that I see he has a lot of other videos of ethics and beats and you definitely need to check this person out. Dr. Manik Maddan is an Indian IMG and he has really honest advice of how you prep how you're supposed to prepare for your step one step two CK and is on his elective journey right now which is which is really huge. Dr. Malki Assad is a plastic surgeon at the University of Pittsburgh and he does put in a lot of effort in making these videos and you can see his trying to improve himself day in and day out and you should check his channel out. Dr. Meet Patel, I 
uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, this is the person that has a lot of these content videos, which are notably a little annoying. I cannot call them tough because once he explains it, you no longer find them tough, but I could call them annoying. For example, the concepts of your VQ mismatch or your Haldane and Bohr effect and things like that. Dr. Deva, I think this is the person that I tried to do my video after and she has a pretty she had a pretty similar timeline from May 2020 to September 2020 uh, of preparation. I prepared during the same time and yeah, this person was the inspiration for me to put this video out and I think I think that's that's how it works. You're supposed to look at people and learn and try to do your best. So if you have any other questions, you can just put it down in the comments and I'll hopefully respond. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful. I'm open to any questions, comments or any suggestions that you would like to make. And in the next video, I will be talking about how I prepared for the FMG examination or the Foreign Medical Graduate Examination of India. Thank you.